Okay, what is everybody? Today we're back again with another video. In the background before we start, you're going to see a quick clip that I've had on the weekend where I found two diamond Bethidi Ibex at the same lake. So that's going to be rolling here in the beginning and then we're going to be going into this guide. But I will be talking about the basics over that clip because I couldn't record audio with it. But why don't we start off with what today's video is. Yesterday we were in Medved, yesterday we were in the cold. Today we're back out here in the heat and we are going to be doing a little bit of an ibex guide and we're not going to be focusing on one no we are going to be doing all four ibex for everybody that does know the four ibex that are currently in the game are the greatos ibex the ronda ibex the southeastern spanish ibex and the Bethidi ibex now for the classes in general the basic information about these ibex they are a class 4 animal which means that you can use anything like the M1, the 7mm, the Rhino, the 6.5, which actually comes with Quattro Cleaners. I would highly recommend trying out that gun. The sound of it is amazing. The accuracy on point. Only thing it lacks, it's a little bit weak, but I mean, these are class 4 animals. It will bring down the Ibex very, very quickly. You will not have to worry about that. You can also use it on the new 303, which comes with Te Avaroa National Park as well as using something like the 243, the 270, all that good uh, like uh, stuff you can use. You can also use buckshot of the shotguns. Um, you use the normal 420 grain arrows on the bows and the 420 grain bolts on the actual crossbows. So that kind of covers all the ammunition that you can use with them. They do have um, two multi-mounts. The more popular one is the Grand Slam multi-mount, which is basically one of each of the four Ibex jumping up and out. We actually only finished that, I think, on Saturday, no, on, on Friday stream. We finished that multi-mount on Friday stream, which was really, really cool. But I just wanted to quickly mention that. The other one, I think it's called like headbutting or something like that. And that is a uh, Bethidi Ibex fighting a ronda ibex if i remember that correctly i'm not quite sure but i do know that there is a second one for them as well they have two rare fur types so the albino and the melanistic and they have an uncommon which is the gray fur variation they do not have any collars so you cannot call these guys in you cannot use any scent lures or anything like that so if you want to get them with the bow or get up right and personal with them make sure that you have an area where you can crawl to and you will just have to sneak your way up to them if you want to see how i did it for example you can watch the diamond sicadier video which we had a couple of days ago where i actually shot a grados and a bathidi ibex with a bow so if you want to see that go check those videos out now let's very quickly talk about their drink time so they drink from eight o'clock in the morning till eleven o'clock I usually make it at 8.30 in the morning and then hunt until 11.30 because a lot of the zones I find go to the end and starting at 8.30 just means that every single animal is going to be in the zone after about 15 to 20 minutes in game time as some of the zones will not all start at 8. Some of them are going to be starting at 8.30. So starting at 8.30 just ensures me basically that I have the right zone types. Now on screen I'm going to very quickly show you guys a map with circles around it. I also labeled on the bottom so you can just screenshot that. You'll have the drink zone in the top left. In the bottom right hand corner you can actually see the color codes. I will read it out once quick. Grados is in green. Ronda Ibex is in blue. South Sp Southeastern Spanish Ibex are in red. And the Bethidi Ibex are in yellow. Now that you saw that, why don't we go to probably my favorite spot for Ibex in general. Besides this lake up here, I really like this one because you actually have two of them right next to each other. You have the Bethidi Ibex on the right, and then on the left-hand side, you have the Grados Ibex, which is just like a perfect scenario. Like, I'll try and show it here. I think it should have been a long enough time now. Might have to ensure that they actually come in. There's a road here. There, let's look. Do we have some luck here with the Grados on this side? I'm pretty sure we should. I should have had enough time to come in by now. Not sure if maybe a wolf spooked away. That is going to be an issue that you're going to be running into at these kind of top areas where the wolves are active. But generally speaking, the wolves should not be close here. But since none are here, why don't we go up here? And while we wait for them to come in, why don't I very quickly talk about their diamond requirement? So the Bethidi Ibex need 191.6. 
and their max weight is 110 kilograms you'll see there's a ton of fours for these guys and a ton of threes that have this max weight estimate so don't be like overwhelmed with the amount of fours that you're going to be finding you will find a ton and i mean a ton of them look there's another three that scores max weight estimate all of them are um max uh max level is five so a five for most of these are basically guaranteed diamond as a lot of the fours make diamond like make diamond as well like you saw in that video i had a five and a four make diamond here for the bathidia ibex which is the clip that you saw at the beginning then southeastern spanish ibex they max out at 87 88 kilograms it, it it is kind of weird it says 87 there sometimes but they sometimes score a little bit higher so just be aware of that it's either 87 or 88 kilograms is the max weight for them and their diamond requirement is 89.6 the great house ibex can be 102 kilograms and they need a diamond requirement of 100.1 Rhonda are the smallest of the bet and they only need 70 kilograms and 107.9 to make diamond. But let me look if I can find one where I can kind of show you guys what I am looking for in terms of when I want to shoot these guys. I generally always want to get broadside because trying to shoot them, shoot them from the front, you usually see them from a far distance away and you really don't want to risk it especially if you have a five on them they're not hard to get as diamonds by any means but of course if you do have one you don't want to mess it up especially in my case where if i mess up a diamond i owe somebody a cake so i am always trying to not mess up a diamond and so far i've had very very good luck in that now i would like to shoot up there but they are just a little bit further and i'd rather show you guys here properly how to aim on them so that you guys get one good reference, see one good example of how it's done, and I don't show you guys a bad shot or anything like that. So let me quickly find an Ibex that I can shoot at a nice distance so that you guys can actually see where I'm aiming and all of that good stuff as well. And well, this right here is what I mean the problem is. Look, there's wolf coming through here and everything is just kind of running away from them. So maybe make it a bit earlier and then just wait a little bit. I usually anyways come in here when it's red deer drink time and then I just kind of finish with the red deer drink time at 8, 8.30 and then I move on to the actual Ibex drinking afterwards. Mouflon also still drink at this time but they do end at 9 o'clock. So if you are just after the great us, uh, not after the great us, after the Ibex in general, um, you will still see some other animals drinking at that time as well. But they will end actually at 9 o'clock and then you'll purely be able to focus yourselves on the ibex now i'm currently actually not seeing any any more gratos here which is odd the wolves probably scared them all away so let me find some that i can actually shoot let's let's try this lake down here i don't think wolves actually come here okay so we're just going to use this four ibex over here to kind of demonstrate what i want to show and you can see here he's 74 to 87 kilograms, but they can, if they're max weight, they will actually go a little bit over that estimate. So don't be shocked if it suddenly says like 87.5, 87.6, something like that. It can happen, but he is standing almost perfectly broad. So he's a bit further than where I'd like to be, but I think it's fine enough and you guys can kind of get the point. But like almost every single species, you have this kind of elbow area there and then the shoulder blade over there generally when i'm basically right at the zeroing distance all i really want to aim for is just slightly and right above that and you will see you will drop that animal basically 90 percent of the time unless you're like 350 340 meters out you only get a single lung then it will run a little bit but more than 50 60 meters it is not going to go further than that if you get a good shot if you mess the shot up, they will run a little bit, but they will go down. If you hit them with the M1, 303, 6.5, anything like that, they will go down. The only thing, maybe 243 soft point bullets and 270 soft point bullets, they might have a slight chance of surviving that, but generally, you will actually be able to take them down. Now, this principle works again for every single animal. I literally use it every single time. And I show it in all of my guides just kind of as repetition because people do often ask me, 
where should I where should I aim? What area should I place my shot on? How am I almost guaranteed to drop my animals when I shoot at them? And my answer is always the same one. Broadside, kind of right behind the shoulder, slightly above where the elbow is, and you're good from there. As long as you're zeroed for the right way, you're not completely out of breath or are trying to take a walking shot, you, you are basically guaranteed to hit the animal where you want to hit and you are going to be guaranteeing yourself the vital organ check which a lot of people, well, which you want to get for a diamond because otherwise you'll just get a different metal which you don't want. If you've got a diamond, you definitely want to make sure you get all of those harvest checks out of the way, use the right ammo, make sure not to damage a trophy organ which for the ibex like most animals with horns is the skull then make sure you get a vital organ hit which is double lung, which is a single lung heart or liver shot and brain technically counts as well but you will usually always hit the um the skull here you can also hit anything here so lower middle and upper neck also counts as a vital organ hit vertebrae does not and then lastly, make sure you don't use more than two shots because otherwise you will lose that trophy score. But once again, here you can see what they need for diamond, 89.6, and we basically shot right where I wanted to. Here's the elbow, here's the shoulder, slightly left and above that, other side, slightly right and above that, and you will hit those lungs perfectly. Now, that's going to be it from my side. I hope you guys don't have any more questions and learn a little bit more about how to hunt the ibex. If you have any further questions, make sure to join my Discord down below. I will try and answer any questions you have there and the rest of the community will help you out as well. If you enjoyed it, thought this was helpful, make sure to like the video as well. It really helps the channel out, helps me a lot and just helps the video spread to more people so more people can get informed about how to hunt the ibex. Also, if you're new around here or you just haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe as I have a lot of content coming out here in the next while and I would just love to have you here in the channel. That's going to be it for me today. Have a good day. Bye bye and peace.